Um, welcome, everybody. I'm Russell Balden, uh, chair of the furniture program here at CCA. I'd like to welcome you for our lecture this, this evening. Um, housekeeping, please turn off your cell phones before I forget, which is always good. Um, it is my pleasure and honor to welcome Yuri Kobayashi for our lecture series this time. I had um, was trying to prepare what I would say about Yuri, and a little while ago I asked, uh, I was like, what should I say? What should I say? And then people, and she was like, I don't know. And then people sitting around her was like, tell her she's kick ass, no. awesome, amazing. And so I was like, oh, don't do that. I was like, that's pretty good. Uh, but that's, I mean, I think we all share the same thing. You are kick ass and awesome and amazing. Oh, don't um, do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, no pressure. Uh, Yuri comes to us from the East Coast right now. She's uh, residing in Maine, of all places, which seems strange for me to imagine you up in Maine, but the, she's doing, um, is it a residency at the? Well, yes, it's type of artist and residency because they, they call it studio fellowship program, mm -hmm. but idea is the same artist and residency. At the Center for? Furniture craft. Furniture and craft, thank you. I was going to mess that up. Um, but she, in her spare time, she teaches at uh, RISD, Rhode Island School of Design, in the furniture department there. And she has received many grants and residencies over the years, including uh, Wingate uh, residency at SUNY Purchase. And also, she did time at the University of Wisconsin Madison with Tom Lozer. And she got her graduate degree at San Diego State with <clears throat> Wendy Mariama and has uh, just returned from International Wood Day celebration in Kathmandu, Nepal. And um, I'm going to leave it at that and let Yuri tell us more. But uh, thank you, everybody. Right. Thank you, Russell. Thank you, ah, thank you very much. And uh, I am uh, very honored to be here. And I have been enjoying uh, participating to this Furniture Department Junior Review and I'm having a good time, and I have one more day to go. And here, um, um, well, I think I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, I am a, let's say, woodworker, furniture maker, but I want to be a sculptor rather than a furniture maker. And um, my slideshow, my talk will be, um, it's not quite a chronological order, but talking about a little bit of background, where and how I came to where I am right now. And I would like to start. Um, oh, here. I think this should work. Yes. And this is very, very uh, the grants. This shows the uh, grants of Japan. And um, I say this all the time that I believe um, once one designs and makes reflects upon uh, uh, nationality and its culture and one's um, characteristic nature and experiences. And um, I was born in Japan and grew up in Japan. And so that's why I have these images, just like mixed kind of collage of like buildings and what Tokyo look like and some greens and and um, before I get into woodworking field, I studied in uh, art and design school, like here CCA. I studied, majored into the architecture. And so I was interested in kind of structure, construction, um, in a particularly wooden structure. So that image is kind of shows that. And um, I studied architecture in four years, and then I worked for architecture firm after that, and then kind of realized that I pondered around, do I want to keep doing this in the rest of my life? What I was doing is that was that um, drafting on a computer, learning AutoCAD, and drafting on a computer, or working on making a small scale model, and I kind of started to seek for something else that I can actually uh, gain skills in my hand. And um, I found a woodworking school in a really rural area um, surrounded with uh, nature, mountain, 
and went to Uruakin School and called Shinrin Takumijuku. It's uh, located in uh, Takayama City and uh, Gifu Prefecture. And so this program, the two years program, and um, this school had this kind of unique operation system. And this school serves as a one of a uh, subcontract for a parent company called Oak Village. And this two years program um, has mainly, I mean, main part of this curriculum was of course woodworking. And I think it says 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and six days in a week and two weeks total in a year off. You can kind of imagine how intense that will be. And that was a two years program. And the main part was woodworking. But on the side of that woodworking, um, that we also cultivate the rice. And then also we learned forestry. And, next. and here is the picture, the rice cultivation. You kind of planting rice and maintain the rice field. And, um, and then you harvest in the fall. And I do now the really appreciate not, not learning, but experiencing this like rice cultivation because um, it took like so much different type of like a process and care that goes into to actually um, harvest delicious rice. And I think that somehow to me that relates to a process, I mean making process. And that's other type of uh, curriculum, other side of the curriculum, the forestry, and kind of study of environmental ecosystem. Like near school, like I said, surrounded <clears throat> in the mountains, mountains. So you walk into um, mountain in woods, and you kind of search, research what kind of trees are growing in that area, and how old, and what need to be done for to maintain the healthy uh, environment in that area. And uh, in the fall, uh, we pick up the acorns and then bring that back to school property and then plant it. And then kind of grow that tree, young tree. And then after three to five, depending on the type of species, tree, and you replant back into woods or forest. And so here it goes. Um, so this is like the main part of that curriculum with work in school. And so two years program. And the first year student um, working as a team and team of like three to four, mostly using machines and making a small item, a small product, like this picture shows like a toys and the frames and uh, small items, stationary goods. And this uh, bottom picture kind of shows that um, it's production so that uh, making like 500 to 2,000 and working as a team. And sometimes like you get the position or task that you be cutting same lengths in over and over and over and over again. And some tasks like last more than eight hours means like you are doing same thing more than a day. And the next day you'll be still doing same thing. And um, the second year, and finally, um, you kind of work using both like hand tools and the machinery and making, learn to make the piece of furniture and a batch of maybe five to 20, 30, and a chair, table, bench, small chest, and sometimes like one-off type of like commissioned project. And so I, Learned woodworking there, finished a two years program, and then I decided to stay at the school working as a staff. Um, I felt just a little bit short after the two years, and I just wanted to learn some more, also wanted to help the school as well. And so I worked there as a staff for four years. And then as a staff, I was supervising those um, assembly lines and uh, machine maintenance and um, order supplies, etc. And um, about maybe fourth year of working at the school, 
um, I got the um, great opportunity from Wendy Mariama at the back uh, back then, uh, head of furniture department at uh, the San Diego State University, uh, gave me a great opportunity to study abroad under her program for about one semester, a little shorter than one semester, three months, and it was really culture shocking, just seeing other students, her program in her program, students work. And um, the eye-opening, what other graduate and undergraduate students are working on, yes, they use wood, but it was not just wood. And it was not like just simply a furniture, that it was kind of shocking. And I kind of wanted to challenge myself um, what I can do with my skill, like woodworking uh, training. So I decided to quit my job and move to the United States and then applied for the grad school. Um, back then, my English wasn't like this, and um, I had to go through the language school first. Is my English OK so far? Is that understandable? OK, so far, so good, all right. And this picture, this is the first piece that I built um, through the um, in the United States, San Diego State University. And it was, I attempted to make a somehow useful functional object, but not in the same sense that I used to. So inspired by obviously Bell's feel and using um, walnut and plywood and um, vinea and the painting was really new to me. And almost painting furniture or painting wood in Japan is almost a taboo. And Wendy introduced to us like milk paint to uh, the, the school that I learned would work and was like really like, what? That's just like jaw dropping, kind of shocking. But so I needed to try that uh, painting. And then I combined uh, incorporated family object, which is a pencil, the yellow, um, Maybe I can use this. This, well, this is pencil, and that the left. Oh, how okay. This one is um, kind of tambour. They using the idea of the tambour, and this kind of rotates or um, opens to allow access to just one box, and this. Kind of basic from uh, the Wells feel that it kind of like rotates, spins around, and each uh, car box kind of swing around. And so, like after going through language school and um, started to officially as a graduate program, and this is the assignment, one of the assignment, the commission project, and each client was given to each student. Um, to kind of learn and work with a client, which was a great um, experience. And luckily, Wendy gave me a Japanese client so that I was able to communicate with client in Japanese. And so this client um, requested me to make a, some type of cabinet storage space with a kind of pedestal type of like a top. He had this specific object that he wanted to place on. And <clears throat> So in the end, he purchased um, this cabinet. And so San Diego, their um, three years program, the graduate program was three years. And now that I was a grad, that it was three years, perhaps I would, felt, I would feel sure if that was only two years. And maybe like first year to almost like a midpoint in the graduate study that I was kind of focusing, making that some type of uh, functional uh, object, a piece of furniture. Um, but um, my interest was more case piece rather than chair or a table. I think I look back now that I'm more interested in a case piece because rather than a chair or a table because I grew up on the floor 
and I didn't make much like attachment or association with like sitting on a chair and working on a table. And so I tried to make a case, um, kind of unconventional style of drawer. And so this is wall hang. I call it drawer and um, use a Douglas fir and a plywood and a Japanese paper. So this red pattern is Japanese paper. I did not paint it. And again, different style, same concept, same idea. And um, this case, oh, sorry, this red thing. This has a pivoting point so that each drawer or box kind of suitable to open. And then um, I tried to make a same concept but freestanding and seven trays and open up like this. Same idea. And I studied architecture. Oh, that's Toby, I'm sorry. And this is another type of assignment, the batch product. And then I decided to make a sliding door cabinet and using ash and and this was another different type of version but it's just a slight difference iteration of that the original idea and the bottom one I think the bottom one has it's hard to see from this picture but the door sliding door part has a slight curb it's not flat um, sliding door And um, halfway, like started to living in San Diego. If you ever been to San Diego, uh, it's really nice. Yeah, around it's warm, not much rain there. And uh, but what I missed the most was maybe food, Japanese food, and the season. And it, Japan, particularly, not the particularly, but um, even Tokyo, and particularly where the place here like Takayama where I learned woodwork in school has a drastic change of each season and that's the I think what I miss the most and so I kind of started to working on a theme and building a shelf that based on that season each season and at the same time middle way in that graduate program Kind of looking back my sketchbook, kind of like I, I have like architecture background and a strong influence by it. So that I started like drawing like straight lines like this and like kind of not knowing but kind of drawing like a grid. And I kind of started <clears throat> not doing it and more free and more organic. I tried force myself to not draw a straight line and still trying to make design and make a uh, functional object and this was a um, spring implied spring and so you can kind of see this main part I call it shelf so you can put stuff on it it's not really flat but it's shelf and then has small curved drawer here you can see here and this one is next one can imply the summer and same thing shelf and uh, small drawer and this is the fall kind of inspiration got from uh, what do you call it like a rice ear top so when you harvest the rice and the what do you call it oh, shoot. I don't know the English um, <laughs> the rice grows like this and like look like this <laughs> oh well and then this is the winter and when you um, hang each shelf onto the wall at a certain level it just like the the top line of the each shelf kind of create create undulated surface but continuous and so I started looking more like um, nature and getting inspiration from more in nature or outside of that kind of furniture. Um, oh, what I wanted to say is 
this? What do you call it? Stalk. 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 Okay, I learned one word today. Good. And so I kind of started looking at and collecting and taking uh, pictures or collecting pictures from that nature. And, and then one day I found a seed pod on the street and, and collected like hundreds of those and let it dry and directly um, combining or um, using in that piece. And well, so it's cabinet and plywood and using the seed pod. It's just a study of organic form. And this is one of my piece uh, for my scissors. And um, so like the um, two years and a half, like you kind of started working on your scissors third year. And at that point, my interest kind of shifted from making, designing and making practical object let's say like utilitarian object where you can call it piece of furniture to more use this object or sculpture. Um, so I realized that the, the graduate, during the graduate study that um, my English was so problematic and then I had the hard time to communicate with other people, but just using that would work in or that skill to communicate people, that I could uh, communicate with people through woodworking. And that kind of kept me going and encouraged me to stay in this country. And so I kind of like, inter I, I became more interested in using that woodworking skill to communicate others, not in the um, practical level, but that was kind of, my um, kind of enlightenment. And so my thesis, I focused on making a sculpture. And this is one piece, and the title the Nations. And this was uh, uh, inspired by my grandmother's uh, death or passed away during my graduate school. And so I built this um, kind of family altar that most of Japanese family has in the house. And water is equipped in the bottom, this bottom of this vessel. And also pump is right there inside and covered inside tons of resin. And water floats, carried up and then flow on the sphere and then going back to the vessel. And this is another detail view. So it's not like a like water fountain for drinking, but it kind of my token for gratitude for my grandmother. And so like um, like I said, like I'm influenced by a lot of like architecture, structure, construction, and then I started looking nature. But at the same time, I'm also fascinated and finding like a beauty in form, like existing object, particularly like a bridges and um, gate. And so this is other another um, piece for my thesis, the called the passage two, and using plywood in this case. And it's kind of hard to tell the scale of this piece, but from edge to edge, it's, it's um, what do you say, 204. So from here to here is, plywood is eight feet long. So the multiple is 16, add, so 18 feet long. And then I used um, 4,000 to 5,000 mortise antenna, the one of uh, common woodworking jointly. And so imagine like a 4,000 or 5,000 making square mortise and tenon. If you are in the furniture department, like you kind of like, what? <laughs> right? But to me, 
is kind of not hesitant to go on or move on or because I have this um, I had the woodworking training back in Japan that I used to do same thing over and over again so like four thousand so I just simply calculate okay you can do maybe like this 120 in an hour so it's gonna be a 10 hours that's that sounds about right you know like you kind of like easy kind of you can estimate how long that could take and then I have like a no fear so like no hesitant to do that so this is kind of detail in this passage kind of like um, talking about um, kind of bridges from like my culture original culture Japan and now like I reside in the United States and kind of I don't want to lose everything from like my Japanese origin but also I kind of want to bridge and like still kind of connected I don't want to be either one of so that's kind of like my main idea concept to design this piece and so like see this piece like I kind of focus on like I said sculpture I care less about the uh -huh. <coughs> excuse me practicality of it and um, but at the same time like when you move from one culture to new culture different culture and you kind of discover about more about yourself and um, you kind of started to pick up like difference between the two the first in my case was the first like I was kind of pick up like a difference between Japanese culture and American culture or Japanese versus American but at the same time I'm started to seeing more and more kind of universality or like the sameness as a human being and that was kind of my focus for uh, thesis and this is kind of uh, titled being and that's kind of my way of um, interpretation of nature of the human being kind of represents how complicated our being like structure but um, these like drawers oops these drawer kind of indicates that what we have inside that some are like kind of shareable and some are not you want to just keep it in yourself so some drawers kind of runs back and forth and some drawer only works one way and this is about 10 feet tall and not this case like 4,000 joineries but well maybe not like more than 10 of, but maybe good numbers of half lap joint in it closer detail you can kind of see my strong influence from the um, architecture but at that point like I was kind of subconscious and a lot of people kind of when this was exhibited in the show a lot of people kind of nailed it right away you made that oh is that obvious it's kind of interesting response for me at least and this um, is also part of my thesis uh, entitled the face and during that graduate program I took numbers of uh, ceramic courses and that kind of like helped me to work more intuitively producing or using my finger directly on the material clay and creating more like organic lines and shapes and forms and this using a wood steam bent wood and on each piece like these are about the fifth size but about a hundred of those that each different I just wanted to talk about um, kind of universality of like each plant or us that kind of like a grow make some changes but kind of like um, kind of dealing with like a from birth to the death but decay and all kind of like all together and these are details and I included this picture because um, I made a tool to create these kind of texture out of wood you make the hand uh, tool out of wood to make that certain pattern or leave the certain texture and I really enjoyed working with clay and 
whenever I get a chance to、uh, work with clay, nowadays I still try to kind of combine. And this is a kind of overview for my thesis. And here, I don't know if anyone recognizes this picture. Anyone? This is、um, Leo Leone is the children's book author, and this book's title is Swimmy. And I read this、um, story at the age of six. And、um, basically, this story tells when many smalls get together and can create,、um, can create like great power, or this case is like、uh, many small fishes.、Um, the <clears throat> School of fish to get together to create the bigger fish to look like a eating like almost like a platter. So I really liked that idea, and this story kind of sticked,、um, have been sticking with me till now. And、um, I do a lot of repetition or using、uh, repetition in my design and making process. And、um, so this is. Kind of represents that idea that、um, it's small sculpture, wall hung sculpture, and using plumb bob at the center. And the cable is running from that plumb bob and going through each frame and going back to、uh, plumb bob again. But、um, I kind of secretly or obviously attach the magnet at the end of the plumb bob and then also inside of the cylinder. And the way that I hung、uh, this piece on the wall, it's just a plumb bob, just a one to two degrees, so that it's not、uh, indicating any particle line. And this is detail. <laughs> and this、um, bleeding,、uh, this is a freestanding big sculpture, six feet. Diameter, and this picture kind of hard to tell, but this is about the circle. It's not like、uh, ellipse. It's circle, six feet tall, six feet diameter. And um, um, this, I did not use glue anywhere. So that means, like every time I get a chance to show this piece. I had to get out to the specific site or gallery, and then spend two days to assemble. And don't know if you can get the idea. Here, like each, like this line was creating or looked like a part of a circle, but this is one member, one part, and this has ten on going through. And task ten with using a silver. So at that point, I was just a little bit smarter, so that I didn't have to make a gigantic crate, but instead spent two days to assemble and disassemble. <laughs> and here is another、uh, my inspiration collection of、um, images. I'm interested in and fascinated. Like circle, wheels, circles, or bird wing, or shape of the boat. And so this is vessel, and、um, you can kind of tell my inspiration is based off on kind of boat shape. And、um, this was particularly for a show. The has to be a、uh, functional, and、um, well, after I graduate、um, grad school, luckily I got the job teaching at the RISD right away, and I still kept the teaching and my studio practice. But my passion was the same from graduate thesis project, just focusing on the sculpture, but. Sometimes, like I get invited in a specific show that ask me to build the functional or piece of furniture show, then okay, what can I do? That's always kind of my struggle. But this is kind of shelf, wall hanging shelf, 
and the lid opens and you can store something here inside. And this is other view. And this is another piece about 10 feet, 11 feet tall and the main part of this part is about the six feet and this was a part of the show uh, exhibition talked and twisted and um, this looks like kind of pod but when you see it I don't know if you can see this but on the side view it's like a looks like more like a boat rather than a seed pod and um, like to me is the ladder kind of are implies kind of a lot of people that supporting my life or my work or me myself and the boat is supposed to be like a floating on the water horizontal horizontally but by a lot of support like almost like i felt like i can fly so like a rocket you know so that's like my basic idea that kind of boat being held by a ladder that kind of like trying to launch take off and this is about 10 feet long ash and suspended from the ceiling and called courage and this piece is about um there was a time that i was depressed maybe broke up with my boyfriend or somehow like i was really depressed and but at that time i think it's fresh to you even your memory that the big tsunami and earthquake hit japan and you're kind of like watching i was watching kind of news every day and i kind of rather encouraged by those people that kind of lost the house or lost um, family members and they are kind of trying to survive trying to live and rather like I'm being just small thing by small thing that I was so depressed but looking at the people that was more like a crisis in that moment but they are kind of trying to live and that was kind of like gave me a kind of uh, more courage or like I was kind of encouraged by them and so this is kind of like um, starting off from kind of our rib cage and kind of trying to grow to make that kind of wing. That was the kind of idea. And then this was also uh, part of that same exhibition, Torqued and Twisted. That's kind of detail. And so I've been teaching at the RISC now that realize surprisingly 10 years now. And the first two years I worked I mean, I was teaching both semester, spring and fall, and um, still I didn't earn enough money or barely making enough money to get by as a teacher or as a artist or maker. And I realized that, yes, I got that MFA degree and yes, I'm teaching now, but I want to focus on or spend my time for my making. So kind of switching um, gear just a little bit so that I teach now uh, three to four classes in just the fall semester. And taking off, um, kind of leave the school from spring semester and then I have winter through spring till the end of the summer now, like seven months or eight months of the year, I do residency or leave the teaching position and then do my work and so this piece is one of uh, residency through a residency pro, uh, program at Anderson Ranch and I collaborated with other artists so ceramic part this part is about 10 feet tall kind of egg like medium holes the ceramic artist made it and then I was response to this and I collaborate um, this piece and when I do residency, sometimes like hmm, eight weeks, sometimes one month, um, short time, um, I kind of like explore or more like a study and trying to do something like a manageable size rather than 10 feet or like tall, big, large scale. And these are kind of my kind of study journey, <clears throat> short 
Tom uh, residency. And after maybe making like large scale sculpture, and now that I have storage unit, one in California, and one in Massachusetts, and one in Maine, so like my pieces like all over, and each place are kind of huge, it's large, and you kind of spent money to store my piece. It sounds kind of ridiculous, right? And so I needed to kind of like start thinking, like making something that manageable size so that I don't have to store uh, in a <coughs> large plate or storage unit. And so this was kind of <coughs> series that I explore, kind of woven technique using steel wood. And this is about 36 inch long. This is another one, and this is another one. So I just worked as a series. And this is kind of current my artist statement, and you don't have to read it, but um, now that I'm more interested in um, more sculpture, obviously, but um, realize that um, the reason why I enjoy making sculpture is I think all about the freedom, all about selfishness, uh, selfishness I think, because when you um, design and make a piece of furniture, which is someone else would be using it, other people would be using it, and so you are constantly thinking about others. But a sculpture, in a sense, you are the center of that world, and you can focus on yourself and um, you can be free. You are not, um, you don't have like any constraint. I think that's the reason why I like making a sculpture so much. And um, I'm kind of using traditional woodworking technique um, to um, explore and express more like emotional quality to communicate with other, communicate with other people. And that's kind of like sticking through uh, from my grad, uh, graduate thesis. And in the past few years that I've been using the same shape of the mold, oh shoot, this shape, and working on on and off uh, kind of mindscape series. And this is one. It's entitled Ride. And after I finished grad school and started teaching, I realized in the past 10 years that I had never lived one spot more than eight months. Eight months is the longest. And then I take off and I'm going back to Providence or I'm going somewhere else and move. So I never lived more than eight months. And so this ride is kind of using this shape as my real car but i still have this like a small dream that house but like to me it's almost like a car is my house or it's kind of still dreaming a house and a part of my life that like the wheel and the moving and the nomadic life is like a part of my life and this is um, using again like same shape and title the chase. And luckily, I think I had access to the ceramic. So I'm using a ceramic and kind of wheel. Um, isn't that like a hamster or like a, so you kind of like has this circle, right? And if you hanging something like this, you kind of never, never reach. It's kind of like, you know, you're torturing them, but there is some time <clears throat> in your life that you kind of like want to reach or you want to achieve, but you're kind of getting to learn that's impossible. But still, you keep at it. And this is battle, it's um, installation. I think, oh, I'm always doing this. From here to the other side, I think right here is the <clears throat> other corner, the wall, and about 14, 15 away each other, and kind of bridging using a 
maple sapling making it look like a rather leather and this title is battle and um, mm -hmm. this piece is about there are so many moments that that you have to go but you cannot like make up your mind so that you're kind of like doing this isn't that so many times that so you're kind of like you have to go you have to do this but you don't know what's gonna be like in the, the other side so you kind of like taking like time to get brave and get going and this is um, again using the same shape and uh, incorporating Japanese paper and the burst and um, this oh sorry so this kind of like this kind of spear kind of like you have like something that inside and sometime like for some reason the kind of like a you know like a burst kind of you just like explode so now like there's some moment that like you are kind of frustrated or something that you are indecisive about something but it, they're just like some moment that it kind of like explode and burst and this is Whisper, and then again I'm using the ash, and this is about 48 inch long, and this circle, every piece that this circle kind of be apart is about this size, 20 inch to 18. And this Whisper is idea is from kind of like this, kind of like shape of the ear, and um, don't you hear sometimes like a sound of like evil whispering you or like that's actually you and kind of inviting you to like like a certain direction that you should not go and sometimes like you know it you shouldn't take it but it's so attractive so tempting and so like I wanted to capture that <clears throat> uh, kind of like you are kind of like invited but actually like you are hearing your voice that you are do it, not do it, do it, not do it. And so this is the detail. And the, here is the, I think the most recent uh, sculpture last year finished, Curio. The 108 kind of antenna look like these with um, three standing point. One back there and here. And here this egg is um, egg shape is hollow and using a coopering technique and then I turned like a finial like spindle turning uh, 108 and um, um, I don't know if there are any Japanese but um, in Japan the every end of the year the December 31st and when that time changes to the new year the every temple shrine started to gong the bell 108 and in the Buddhism um, we believe that the about 108 um, obstructive emotion that you want to purify every year so like I was thinking like if I could get rid of all negative thoughts all negative like emotional quality like which um, is maybe like hate maybe like attachment and it's something that kind of like um, bothers you or like obstruct to be a peaceful mind and what if I could get rid of all that 108 um, emotion quality maybe you just become like pure like an egg so that was my um, original idea and then this is a kind of cross of you and I was kind of happy to hear some people's response to this object that kind of creepy kind of cute kind of goofy but that's kind of like us like human beings to me kind of kind of goofy kind of cute kind of creepy I think that's all about us and um, and in the past like so many people's compliment my work that are beautiful and I wanted to get that somehow response that are not beautiful there's something that different than the beautiful and so this was kind of like 
for me it was a great success because I had a uh, response not simply beautiful. And oh, that's creepy. I, mm, like, I got this response that to me is like, yes, that's good. And so like, I'm making a sculpture and that's like my passion goes, but sometimes I need to practice since I teach woodworking. And sometimes I need to go back to uh, basic woodworking practice. So sometimes I cut dovetail, making a stool bench. And um, I love using hand tool. I don't mean to be like anti-technology, but um, <clears throat> whatever I can do by hand or by myself, I try to do it by myself. And then I think I even enjoy the process rather than like outsource something somewhere else or having CNC to do a job that I would enjoy the most. And, but this piece, I learned a CNC technique and this was the first and the only one small project that I used a CNC. And then after that, like this, I was trying to make a similar form that I created in a previous, like using CNC, what I can do with using traditional woodworking technique to capture the similar uh, shape or form. And like I mentioned, like when I <clears throat> um, invited or participating into some type of like a furniture show, then I make a shelf or table that suggestively functions, but more like a sculpture. And this is the shelf, and um, this is the table. Um, it's a small accent table, but you can dog uh, iPhone, iPad, small iPad, and the top lid is removable, so this table kind of features as a table, but also a container, also no mechanical speaker for iPhone. And this is lamp. And this is like one of my notebook or sketchbook. Um, I'm currently working for a furniture show. My God's sake. And um, I made a chair and this is my drawing sketching. And, um, and I do sketch in a notebook or some type of paper where I have a hub. And, but I think I have more three-dimensional works better in my brain than I'm working on a two-dimensional like drawing. So a lot of the times like I do kind of like small uh, sketches all over and drawing over and over and again. And also like I do make small scale like a maquette that kind of like <clears throat> gave me a better information and better idea rather than just like drawing like this. And based off from this maquette and uh, so many scratches, and this is the uh, end product chair. The front view and this is the side view. And then I think this is the last images, I believe. So this is the last piece. Thank you so much.